If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Okay. Okay. I'm going to open up the hearing now for Senate Bill 20, and I'd like to uh, ask the fire sponsor to come forward, uh, the Honorable uh, Senator D'Alessandro, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the committee, for the record, I'm Senator Lou D'Alessandro. I represent District 20, Manchester Wards 3, 4, 10, 11 of the town of Goffstown. Come before you as the prime sponsor of Senate Bill 20. The bill is a, a request of the Department of Safety's Forensic <coughs> Laboratory. The purpose of the bill is to enable the laboratory to use the latest and most accurate technology in determining the intoxication of individuals charged with offenses under the motor vehicle, fish and game, and aeronautic laws of the state. A representative from the laboratory is present and will testify as to the, the technical aspects of the bill. The bottom line is there are two types of chromatographics that can be used to analyze this evidence and make the determination, gas chromiographics and liquid chromatographics. Initially, there were only liquid chromiographic and the motor vehicle law regarding intoxicated drivers, the fish and game laws regarding intoxicated hunters, and the aeronautics laws regarding intoxicated pilots, pilots all authorized the use of gas chromatographics for these tests, thus making the results admissible in court. In recent years, a new and improved device, the liquid chromatographic, has come on the scene but they can't be used in New Hampshire for these types of tests because the law regarding, regarding these uh, three offenses used in the words gas chromatographics. However, they appear, they, appear those, they appear in those statutes. There will be no cost associated with the, this bill because the lab already has the liquid chromatographics which will be used in, in other ways. That's a, that's a basic observation of the legislation. The only reason why we need it is because it's not in the law as we speak. Gas is in the law, but liquid is not in the law. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I conclude my testimony. Hope you'll act uh, positively with this piece of legislation. And someone is here from the forensic laboratory who could address any specific questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you want to leave a copy of that? Or? Uh, if it, is there a clerk? The clerk. I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Representative Marple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee here. I introduce myself before, so I don't have to be redundant here. I try to make it uh, short. I, I would like to have the committee look at line 20 in this proposal, because that's what concerns me. And why it concerns me is because it uses the term vehicle. That is a very, shall we say, unspecific term. I've left both pieces of documentation <coughs> with regards to the difference between an automobile and a motor vehicle. I introduced a bill which uh, I actually copied it. It was House Bill 598, which I uh, unfortunately became a victim of what I term as, well, let's put it this way, parliamentary pi piracy. What do you say, what do you mean piracy? Well, if you all remember the last session, there's a whole bunch of bills, table, table, table. I was a victim of three of them. So what I had to say never was made available to the general court. They don't know about it. So what I thought was perhaps by submitting this documentation to this committee here, you people would also become at least part of them aware of a serious situation that exists in this state. And that is the definite, you know, I'm going to refer to them here because you both, the New Hampshire Supreme Court, if you look on uh, 
the bill that says that the following four pages of the CC, which are there, and support exactly what I'm talking about as far as the difference between an automobile and a motor vehicle. It's New Hampshire's Supreme Court, Justice Grimes. Anybody old enough to remember Justice Grimes? That was about 50 years ago, in 1967. Justice Grimes, in, in volume 108, page 386 of the Supreme Court reports, and you will find that Justice Grimes described the motor vehicle an automobile difference. The automobile is described and has been under what already exists, and that's RSA 382A 9-109. And the automobile is not designed for commercial use unless it's used as a taxi or another uh, source of revenue. So the difference between an automobile and a motor vehicle is the automobile is a pleasure vehicle that is also defined by the New Hampshire Supreme Court in the other document that I submitted with you, uh, which is uh, one, two, three, four, uh, fifth line down. The word automobile connotes a pleasure vehicle designed for the transportation of persons on the highway. American Mutual Assurance and Company versus Chaput. That's in volume 95 of the New Hampshire Reports, page 200. It's also in the American uh, US, I mean, 60 AD, uh, AD, A, 2D, 118. So what we're describing here is on page, uh, I mean, <coughs> what is it, I'm sorry, line, uh, line 20, that's got to be either changed or something's got to be done to improve it says attempts to drive a vehicle. Well, you don't drive an automobile. You travel in one. You're a traveler. And as a traveler in an automobile, you don't need a license. You only need a license if you're going to use the highways for commercial purposes. And you don't have to register it. You don't have to register your automobile. Why? Because it already exists as consumer goods, also known as household goods, and you will see the court cases that are in here, that consumer goods don't have to be registered. So why does the motor vehicle department take your certificate of origin and convert it into a certificate of title? You're lying. You're entering into a contract with a motor vehicle department to buy a piece of paper that says it's a certificate, it's not the title. The original title to your automobile should have come from the dealer to you. And if you wanted to uh, finance it, you take your certificate of origin to the bank or lending institution or whatever lending institution you're going to borrow the balance to pay, pay off the dealer, and you negotiate the best deal you can get on the interest. And who gets it? The bank or the lending institution holds that certificate of origin until you pay off the, the mortgage on it. The certificate of origin is a deed to property. And right now that deed is being subjected to what you will find, if you look it up, it's called conversion. I don't want to see the state continuing with committing a tort of conversion with the certificate of origin being converted into a certificate of title because the state then owns your automobile. When that certificate of origin goes to the motor vehicle department, it's changed into a certificate. It's not the title. The corporate government, the state, owns your automobile. And you are then permitted the use of it as long as you comply with what you have contracted with when you pay the consideration to get the certificate. Not the title, but a certificate, a piece of paper. The certificate of what title? Well, where's who's got the title? The corporate government's got the title, not you. And there you're subjected to all of the restrictions and the, the rest, which is, pertains solely to the commercial use. 
our police departments, instead of out there raising revenue by giving speeding tickets and so forth. Mr. Marble, I yes. I, I understand where you're going, but the thing is, we're really talking about intoxication and not. That's exactly. Not, but so that's exactly what we're talking about. I, I understand Vic, the automobile is part of it, but we exactly. even talked about why the liquid and intoxication part. We, we understand about the automobile. Well, I don't know you do. That's my understanding of the bill. Uh, uh, excuse me. We're talking about that and not driving and, and doing a vehicle. No, as, as I open my remarks, when I'm referred to uh, uh, line 20, it says drive a vehicle, and that is very vague. That's the issue. My, well, my, I'm not making it, I'm saying that no. that is something that should be addressed. Well, my understanding would be if you're intoxicated with the vehicle, then you're, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what we're talking about is if you have a level that's intoxication with the vehicle, not worrying about registration. That's what I think. No, that, I brought that up to show the difference which this documentation will show you okay. that the, our Supreme Court, our, our Supreme Court, and I referenced the two cases, have already determined the difference between an automobile and a motor vehicle. Okay, that's fine. Motor vehicle being commercial. And so, if you've got a vehicle here, then you're only referring to commercial use of the highways and not pleasure use of the highways. That's why I suggested that this be amended. That line 20 should be amended where it's uh, to be more specific. Isn't that what I said? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I said. So I'm not trying to be argumentative here. I'm trying to show that what a lawyer would do, if you go over this, you go, uh, uh, it's void for vagueness. Because what's a vehicle? Anyway, I'll shut up, and uh, you're welcome to I'll answer any questions that you might have on it. But that's a specific thing. There's got to be some changes here. Do the members have any questions? I see you on Thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <coughs> so what you're saying is that the word on line 20 was changed to automobile. It would yeah. be a good bill. Well, it doesn't say that. See, it says, uh, it says vehicle. I, I just drive a vehicle. That's the point that I'm getting at. It's not specific. It should be spe specific. And what do you want to call it? Uh, uh, let's, let's put it this way. Any person who uh, travels, that would be a better boy, but travels upon the ways of this state. Then you can, you, you can incorporate automobile, motor vehicle, snowmobile. Now they got snowmobile in uh, mentioned <coughs> or off-road vehicles, see, that, that, those are specific. But that one there on line 20 is not specific, and that's what my concern was, line 20. Thank you for the question. Okay, no further questions, thank you. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, and again, this is not opposition, it's yeah. clarity. And, that, and the committee can make that change. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Timothy Piper from the Department of Safety. Morning. Morning. Copies my testimony. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Timothy Piper. I'm the Forensic Laboratory Director with the Department of Safety, uh, Division of State Police. And I'm here to talk about this bill. This, as Senator Del Sander uh, spoke about this. This was a uh, request from the department to, to allow uh, the legislature to change the, the current law, which basically states uh, the method of use uh, for blood intoxication to be used, uh, gas chromatography mass spectrometry. And the, the, this, uh, this bill, more or less, uh, in fact, if you look at it, it only adds the word liquid or gas. Uh, it allows us to make use of new, newer technology. Gas chromatography, mass spectrometry has been the gold standard for the past uh, several decades. Uh, and uh, over the past uh, several years, uh, liquid chromatography has, has actually uh, eclipsed um, the, the, the gold standard, if you will, of gas. Allows us to be more efficient in, in the forensic laboratories. We can basically uh, do twice as many samples in the same amount of time. Uh, as the Senator did uh, speak about, we, we actually have two of these instruments currently. We're using them for, uh, uh, to analyze urine for the Department of Corrections, and uh, we validated them, and uh, made, made 
current make use of those that technology. So it's great technology. Uh, we would just uh, more or less like to be able to use it for uh, our DWI statute. So we're not changing the the, 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 the statute itself, just allowing us to to, to use this technology. Um, it's pretty straightforward, I, I hope. It's a more or less a housekeeping bill to allow us to, to make use of this great technology. Uh, just so you know, uh, these instruments are about $280,000 a piece, so we've, we've invested heavily in the technology already, and I just want to make uh, available to the <coughs> to more efficient processing of our, our samples. Not only uh, alcohol, but also, uh, as you know, uh, drugs are, uh, are being used for impaired driving. Uh, anywhere from marijuana to certainly we've seen uh, heroin and fentanyl uh, being used on our, our highways and, and you know we're trying to get these pieces out as, as quickly as possible and it will help reduce our backlogs. I am uh, happy to take questions. Uh, I have one question. Certainly. Do you think you could elaborate on line 20 about the vehicle situation that was brought up? Uh, uh, do, do you understand it? Uh, is a separate issue? I, I think it's a se certainly a separate issue from what we're bringing up here. Right. Uh, I would also, I've been with a forensic laboratory for 20, almost 28 years. Uh, so I've been in court situations throughout the state. Uh, I've been uh, obviously questioned by uh, a fair amount of defense counsels. So I would uh, submit to you that if this was a, a current issue, it would have been brought up in, in the court of law. Uh, and, and I can tell you, it really, it hasn't come up as far as vehicle versus motor, uh, or automobile versus motor vehicle currently. Uh, I, I, would I would certainly think it, it would have made its way to, to <coughs> the court and the appeals process currently. So again, I'm not an attorney, I'm a chemist, uh, but I can just talk to you about what we've, what we've seen in the lab. It hasn't been an issue for almost three decades. Thank you. Question? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can you just, just because I do not fully understand the difference, can you just give us a quick little idea? So you collect a sample, right? you're insane. Tell me the difference between if it's gas and liquid. Just give me an idea. Sure. So, so gas uh, or liquid refers to, we have this big instrument, and I'm certainly happy to know it's the, the view it. I can do that. But the, it, it talks about the mobile phase. What pushes the sample through the instrument? So a gas, we would actually have inert gas, typically nitrogen, uh, helium, and that passes, pushes the sample through the instrument and allows it to go to the mass spectrometer, which then analyzes it. So that's the gas of the mobile phase. Liquid, instead of using uh, gas, we're using liquid. Typically, it's a mixture of water and acetyl nitrile, and it pushes the, 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 the blood or the urine into a solution, an aqueous solution, and, and puts that through the column and separates the compounds. Okay. Good. Thank uh, you. Hopefully that's, Thank you. That I can certainly exactly. uh, I believe that the committee is going to be inviting the Department of Safety for a tour at some point, and maybe that can be shown at that time. Absolutely. You know. I can show you the difference between we right. have, currently we have about 10 gas chromatograph mass spectrometers, yeah. and we have two of the uh, liquid chromatographers that I'd like to show you. Thank you. Uh, question? You make me feel dated. Uh, so this isn't uh, a second blow test scenario at all anymore. Do you have to go out and recalibrate what's used in the field for the samples are collected? <coughs> uh, Representative, so, so the samples are collected or, or just submitted to us as their blood samples or urine samples. So the, I think you're referring to the breath alcohol testing. That's correct. Correct. So I'm in a wrong ballpark here. <laughs> a little bit. You're being kind. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is the way this is applied to on a traffic stop and a DUI, can you show me how this how this could be applied? Is there you mentioned it could determine samples of, of someone who's under another drug, whatever too, or if they have too much uh, painkiller, too much Advil, take ten Advil and drive a car. Yes. Um, is it going to help them on the stop or is it going to help them once the arrest is made and the sample's gone to the lab? Uh, thanks for the question. It actually helps in the back end, if you will. So the sample's already collected. What it does provide is a more timelier turnaround. So instead of waiting, you know, you know, three weeks, we can get that done in, in half the time. Well, so, so they would get the results quicker because we can push more samples through. In fact, uh, in, in my in my uh, sheet that I uh, submitted to you, I gave you an example. Uh, gas chromatography <laughs> takes anywhere from 10 to 22 minutes per sample. Liquid. Uh, takes about five to ten, so so each sample is, is about half the time. 
Yes, sir. So actually, this is not something that's going to help really on a, on a direct stop an immediate arrest or a determinant intoxication or impairment on a, on a stop. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a question again along the lines of I don't know much about this. Um, where would these samples be collected? So someone would be stopped for something, they would be taken to a place, a police station. Uh, who would, where's the blood drawn? Where's the urine collected? Sure, that's a great question. So um, there, there's actually two typical ways of collecting uh, blood samples in our state. One, uh, larger police departments actually have a, a blood drawing room. So they actually uh, have phlebotomists come to the police station to draw their blood. Other instances, the police departments actually take them to the local hospitals and have what's referred to as legal blood draw uh, taken at that point. And, and then that is considered evidence. It's submitted to the forensic laboratory for testing. Uh, so that's blood. Urine is handled by the Department of Corrections and Probation and Parole, and that's collected at different. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't see any more. So thank you Thank you very much. We're going to close the hearing on Senate Bill 20. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.